The STR1 engine on the Korg uh, Kronos is, by definition, a blocked string model, a physical string model. However, um, it can certainly be used in a more, shall we say, atypical way for sounds that have nothing to do with uh, what we could think of uh, a plucked string. So I uh, was thinking for this uh, video um, to show maybe a few things that uh, the STR1 engine can do when used in a, a more uh, uh, non-typical uh, way. And the opening sounds uh, are from one of my patches, which is just adding a little bit of extra harmonics and uh, uh, changes to the, the, the sound, which actually starts as, a, as an actual uh, choir sample. And it's pumped through the, the STR1 engine and the string model. Uh, and, well, a lot more drastic things can be done. I was thinking that uh, one of the, the patches could uh, demonstrate. And if we start with another um, something that I called sonar string in a moment of complete lack of inspiration because it's basically starting from the, the sonar uh, ROM sample and then we do things to the sound. So to show what the original sound uh, is, if we go into the, the actual SDR engine and for a moment we forget about the the plug types and uh, excitation. Uh, we can go to the excitation mixer and we take out all of the various excitations except the one which is the actual PCM oscillator. So as we know here we have the three uh, possible ways to excite the string. Basically, we got the pluck, we got the, the PCM waveform that we take from uh, the ROM samples, for example, and we got a noise generator. So if we turn all of those off, except the PCM wave, and in the PCM oscillator panel, we set up the mentioned sonar multi-sample. And also, to just listen to what this sound sounds like, we can take down all of the paths in the, the output mixer. So we're going to just hear the PCM oscillator. And it's not terribly remarkable. It's basically sounding the way that the sonar sample sounds. However, If we go back to the excitation mixer, uh, we left uh, only the PCM oscillator to actually uh, work as a, a string excitation. So if we take out the PCM oscillator and we just listen to what the string sounds like, it can demonstrate that you can start from a certain type of sound you can use it as an excitation for the string and just that can lead to radically different um, sounds so it's actually worth experimenting with it. We'll show a little bit the, the string parameters in a minute. There's nothing uh, uh, terribly exotic set up here but the same sound that we heard if it's now pumped through the STL1 engine, then we get this. So who would have thought? So here, um, when we are listening to essentially what the string uh, does, we, we are not yet setting up any pickup uh, Output. So the pickup one and pickup two are zero level, as we see here. We can see that in the the string, uh, we just set up a an excitation at a position 
or 25. Um, nothing terribly un unusual. Uh, we're using some generous uh, decay, a little bit of non-linearity um, in damping. Uh, there's a, a, a bit of damping and we set a, a, a large-ish dispersion. If you play with these parameters, then you can see how uh, just that sonar multi-sample pl plucked, uh, excited um, through the string. Uh, with sound. So we can take, for example, this version. So we could hear that just changing that parameter can have some radical uh, sonic uh, changes. What we can also do uh, is that in a mixer we can add back some of the pickup outputs. So we've added here, of course, some adjustability with the, uh, the vector joystick. But for just adding in a, a touch of pickup 1 and pickup 2, which are set up here, and they are sort of well, close-ish to each other, so we got position 11, position 20, we can modulate these, we can, we can do things to it. But in a sort of static setup, now... Uh, it acquires an almost um, vocal-like uh, character. It certainly is light years away from the original sonar. Uh, multi-sample that we used um, to make the, the string excitation. And then this can be built on, because if we go to the excitation mixer, we actually had a little bit of a noise initially, so we can add something there. Um, so with the noise generator coming into the picture, and we're going to change it a little bit in terms of uh, the amount uh, of how much this is exciting the string uh, with the vector joystick, then we, we can immediately hear that there is a bit more twang to the sound. There is, it's, 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 it's got some uh, harmonics and, and, and coloring just because of a little bit of a, of a noise being fed in. And uh, with these vector joystick settings as is, before we add any plucking um, to this, we can go a bit nuts and change the sound. So that, that was just cranking up the noise uh, amount that is actually fed into the, the excitation mix, which is exciting uh, the string. So all these changes that we hear are purely done with the vector joystick, which is controlling the amount of noise, is controlling some of the uh, parameters that we see here, so the damping and the dispersion that we played with a little bit via you know, directly changing the values, uh, that was also now altered with the, uh, the vector joystick, and we could hear how the, the sound was moving around. Um, in terms of uh, the frequency content and, and its character. So, you know, yes, uh, let's contradict ourselves. So this being a string uh, model, and we looked at how we don't pluck it, uh, strictly speaking, if we want a bit of attack to this and a, and a bit of a twang at the beginning of the sound, then uh, we could add, obviously, we could add back some amount of actual plucking, and the pluck settings um, well, is set to the harpsichord, which I quite like, so it adds a little bit of a noise as well, and it's got that nice uh, early music um, sort of feel, so obviously it imitates the way that in the harpsichord essentially the strings are being uh, plucked when the keys are uh, hit. And just adding that into the mix we're gonna get uh... 
So now we have essentially a sound in three parts uh, because we've started with the sonar uh, sample, which is exciting and doing a great job on itself, uh, completely changing the, the character of the, uh, the sound that we, we heard initially playing the, the original sample, uh, added a bit of a noise and added a, a, a plucking. So something along these lines can be also played with in a little patch which I, huh, again, I kind of called pluck sweep organ because I couldn't think of anything else. So it will be, as you guessed it, something more kind of organ-like. It has a plucked part and there will be a sweeping uh, element. Um, this sound will fly off because we're going to play a bit more dynamically with the noise excitation and the excitation filter. So what we have here, if we start from the organ, we'll have a full-blown pipe organ, and then the real fun is happening in the excitation mixer, because not only we have uh, we saw, uh, this blocked element, and we're going to have the PCM oscillator uh, with the organ sound, but the noise generator is actually adding a, an increasing amount uh, of noise because we're going to control it with the envelope uh, generator, which is also for the filter. And the excitation filter, which is set to high pass, is also changing uh, the frequency quite uh, radically with the same envelope generator. So using the other one, uh, the other envelope generator to make the organ fade out and give way to this swelling, uh, the sound, uh, we're going to get uh, this combination. So we can hear how the organ gives way to this um, sweeping uh, sound. And uh, to just listen to that in isolation, we can, of course, completely take out the uh, pluck element. Uh, we can now listen to just the organ. But the interesting thing is happening uh, in this swelling element of the noise. Um, and If we enable the excitation filter, then this is what we get. So without the filter, it's uh, moving around a bit less, obviously, because this is just the noise intensity uh, increasing. So this is again a, a demonstration that uh, by essentially using different excitations for the, the, the string model, we can really have uh, crazy results, which is really good. Um, and then if we add back, let's say all the elements that we had, so the three parts of the string, we can again um, do quite radical things to the, the damping, the dispersion. So you notice that the vector joystick is going to change uh, the damping amount quite radically and the dispersion amount quite radically. So the character of the sound that we're going to get will really move around. Uh, so these are the changes if I just start playing with the, the vector joystick. <laughs> So here, by radically affecting the dispersion uh, parameter, um, affecting the damping, you get a very different character of the of the sound, um, and certainly the plucked part. And with the damping uh, increasing, is actually uh, altering also the the higher frequency excitation. So the the noise filter, um, sorry, the noise uh, excitation with the 
uh, excitation filter coming in will have less of an effect until we reduce the damping on the string. So again, this shows that um, you know there are some quite uh, esoteric sounding uh, parameters for the string model, but they are really um, changing the characteristics of the waves that are propagating in this uh, string and we can do physically impossible things as well in this model and this is why playing quite aggressively with some of these parameters can completely change the outcome um, and if we uh, go to just the uh, example that we started with in uh, this case we can go for, let's say, this choir. So here, there are much more subtle things being done to the sound. So again, we are using, uh, as we heard at the very opening, we are using a, a voice, a, a choir sample, and we uh, don't really set up the plug. So this is a, a pretty kind of... Um, default um, settings, um, whatever was in there initially, uh, because in the excitation mixer we see that we're only going to use the noise generator and we're only going to use the, the PCM sound without the, the plug at all. And in the final mixer we can see that we're going to take uh, some of the original sound, we want that choir, um, and we're going to have the string and the two uh, pickups. And in this case, nothing exotic has been done to the string, um, so we're going to be able to play a little bit with uh, the damping and excitation, but we want a kind of a, a rather kind of natural behavior. Um, and um, in the pickups, we, we put two pickups uh, kind of next to each other. We can have a, uh, just to be a bit um, uh, funny uh, for this, we can actually have an... Um, uh, an envelope generator changing the position of these uh, pickups. So that's something that, you know, on a physical guitar, ah, it's a bit hard to imagine, but here you can actually uh, have refined controls to move around uh, the pickups on, on, on the string. And, um, and then the output, if I start playing with the vector joystick, is what we had at the beginning. This is more uh, choir uh, on its own almost because I've taken down the vector joystick the, the intensity of the others and then we can put in here from the string model and the pickups and you can hear just a subtle subtle changes to the sound, uh, nothing as dramatic as we had before when we completely changed the linearity uh, or the non-linearity of the string and various other parameters rather aggressively. Here we just wanted to color the original uh, choral sound and uh, add extra harmonics and coloring um, as we play with the, with the joystick. So this was done on a very windy, grey, uh, miserable uh, English weekend, uh, but uh, hopefully it is of some use and uh, I guess the overall message, if there is any message uh, in this video, is that uh, while it is by definition a plugged string model, do not just treat it as something designed to make plucky string sounds. And you can absolutely go to town with this engine and as we've seen, uh, just by setting up a rather uh, normal uh, string, pumping different excitations through this uh, and listening to the output and mixes of the output, you can get absolutely drastically different uh, behaviors. We can get sounds which are uh, you know, light years away from what people would normally imagine as originating from a blocked string. So have fun.